When God has an intention, what happens is God automatically brings that intention into being. So God had an intention to have children. And as soon as God had that intention, immediately there were all these little images of God created. Right? Of which you are one half. Right? And they all have masculine and feminine qualities of various degrees. So some of these little souls, we will call them the word souls, Some of them have lots of femininity, a little masculinity. Others have lots of masculinity, a little femininity. And they actually split in two when they come to Earth. So what actually happens is, at this condition or at this level, there's a few things that they are not aware of. For example, let's look at what these souls are aware of in this condition after they were just first created, before they've ever experienced anything. Well, the first thing is that they have some instinct. So they instinctually know to incarnate, for example. And we'll talk about what that means in a minute. They also have personality. And this is why like some, some people, were after they've come onto the earth, some of them seem to be really good at music, other ones seem to be really lousy at it, some seem to be good at art, others terrible at art and so forth. All of, all of these kind of things are all a part of the personality. And God created the personality. And just like everything that God created, there is a huge variety. So it goes from one spectrum, if you like, partly knowing anything about art at all, right the way to the other spectrum of being five years old and being able to do some wondrous uh, paintings, for example, with regard to just that, that quality of artist, the artist quality. Every personality has all of these unique attributes. You are completely unique. Uh, there's a few things, and this is where the challenge begins, there's a few things the soul does not have. And the first one I'm going to say is really unchallenging. At this stage, the soul does not have How does that feel? I'll explain why. When the soul is in this state, it has never yet learned to ex it hasn't experienced anything. Does that make sense? It doesn't even know of itself. It, it does not have any consciousness of self. Consciousness. In other words, it's not yet aware of who itself is. Does that make sense? The reason why is because it's never actually experienced any life at this stage. At the instant God created the soul, the soul obviously never had a previous existence. Does that make sense? So therefore, it can't have been conscious of who it was yet. Does that make sense? And so that pristine, so this is the pristine condition, if you like, of the soul just at the instant of creation. And it doesn't know even that it has a choice. Because it has yet to experience choice. It doesn't know yet that it's got free will because it's yet to experience what free will is. Does that make sense? It is actually the process of incarnation that creates the, the ability to have free will. It creates the ability to have choice. And this is why we incarnate. We incarnate in the first instance. In other words, we come to Earth with a physical wrapper and a spirit body wrapper and the reason why we come to Earth in that form is so that we can begin to experience. Does that make sense? Yeah. Any questions about that? Um, what is the soul aware of? Is it aware of anything at all at that particular point? And because it is not self-aware, all of the awarenesses that it has, it's not conscious of having. Does that make sense? Mm -hmm. Yes. It's only once the soul incarnates that it becomes self-aware, 
And I call that process individualization. In other words, that it now becomes self-aware, aware of itself. Once it becomes aware of itself, it now becomes, it begins to become aware of everything happening around it as well. Does that make sense? But before that moment, it actually was not aware of self or anything around it. Although all these things were around it, it just was not aware they were there. 